everybody, it's Ranger Anne from Myrtle Beach State Park, and today we're gonna have a fantastic time making this really cute shark craft. We call it our silly swaying shark, and we'll show you why in a little bit. But our purpose of this video today is threefold. To make this craft, to learn about the amazing adaptations that sharks have, and at the end of the short video, we're also gonna show you some footage that we have filmed from the pier at Myrtle Beach State Park of some really cool sharks. So let's get started on our sharks. So we're gonna show you, look at these, really cute. We're calling them silly swaying sharks. As you can see, we love bright colors. You can do lots of different colored sharks or whatever you want. We prefer you having two different colors, you know, a dark color on top and a lighter color on bottom, but in the bitter end, you can do whatever you want, like this wonderful rainbow colored shark. So do whatever you want. Uh, a couple things we recommend though, is use cardstock or construction paper so that it will stand up and sway. If you use just normal copy paper, it'll still be a cute shark, but you will not be able to sway. And so now we'll go to our pattern. And our pattern here, that is again a Myrtle Beach State Park original. You can either, again, it, copy it on cardstock or construction paper. This should be a darker color. This is the dorsal or the top part of the shark. This should be a lighter or a white color. And then also, if you can't, if you don't have the ability to print, you can always take a piece of white paper and maybe put it up on your computer screen and trace it for your pattern. The other things you're gonna need for this craft are a marker, pencil, scissors, and glue. And so what we're gonna do when we start this craft, we have already cut everything out, so if you have not cut out all your, all your shark parts, please do so now, and I would stop this video. So again, we're just gonna start from where the shark is already cut out. And so what we're gonna first do is we're gonna fold everything along the dotted line. So we're going to fold this bottom part of the shark. Here's your fold. And then this shark on the top part, this is where our fold is, but we don't wanna see this fold on our silly swaying shark. So we're gonna fold it inward like that, so that we don't see the fold. Okay, and so now we're gonna cover up these little dotted lines. And you don't even have to glue this if you don't want. I'm not gonna glue it. And already there, we're starting to have a little bit of a shark. And then we're also gonna fold our fins so we can get going. Okay, so we're just gonna use a little bit of glue and we're gonna put on our first dorsal fin of our shark, and we're gonna put this dorsal fin, I think I used too much glue there, uh, just below the pectoral fin that we'll talk about in a little bit. So this is the first dorsal fin, and then we'll glue on our second dorsal fin. Now here's a great fun fact about sharks. Anybody wanna guess how many sharks are out there in the world, how many different kinds of sharks are swimming around in our oceans? I can't hear you. There's about 500 different kinds of sharks out there, so not all sharks are built alike. They all don't look alike. They all don't have the same dorsal fins. Some sharks are as small as the palm of my hand. Some can grow as large as 50 feet like the whale shark. Some are fast moving sharks. Some are slow moving sharks. Some sit on the bottom. Some are in the open, open pelagic ocean where all they do is just swim, swim, swim. So all sharks are not made alike. So keep that in mind. We're just doing a general silly shark today. So the dorsal fins, they help to keep the shark balanced and not roll over. They are not, like during the movie Jaws, used to scare people. That's not the purpose of them. And honestly, when we're on the pier at Myrtle Beach State Park, we see sharks quite often, but it's rare that we actually see the dorsal spit fins. So now we're gonna glue on the caudal fin or the tail fin, and we're gonna glue it onto the dorsal part here. So just put it in like that, put it down. And again, the dorsal or the caudal fin is really important is for propulsion. It gives that shark the ability to move. And again, all caudal fins are not made alike. Some sharks are slow, some sharks are fast, and all caudal fins look very, very different. Uh, then we have the pectoral fin. And sharks with the pectoral fin, it's more like airplane wings to give them lift and also a little bit of steering. And sharks have some other fins that we aren't gonna be able to use on our silly swaying shark, so we won't worry about those right now. So the next thing we're going to do 
is we are going to glue on our eyeball. And sharks, depends again, 500 different sharks. Many sharks have pretty good eyesight. Some can see from a, a good distance, some very close, some can see in color, kind of all depends. And some sharks, what's really cool is they also have a, uh, like a third eyelid called the nictitating membrane. And that eye will go over the eye, protect it, just as a shark is getting ready to bite something. Uh, you know, many of the shark's prey might have claws or teeth, and that eyelid will help protect it. Imagine if we were eating our pizza and had claws or teeth and was biting back at us. We'd want to protect, be protected too. So we're now going to fold this over. And we'll put on another eyeball just for fun, but honestly, this silly shark craft is really, it's, it's more about being one direction, one way. It's not a two-sided shark that you're gonna see very well. But the reason we're doing it is I wanna talk more about some of their adaptations. Now, before we get to all the specialized senses that sharks have to find their food, we also wanna talk about how sharks breathe. They don't have lungs like marine mammals, dolphins, and whales. They have gills. And sharks have anywhere from five to seven gill slits. So take your marker and just draw some gill slits, five of them. If you ever see a shark that has less than five, it's probably not a very um, well-developed, thought-out shark, so don't, don't, don't do that. It has to be at least five to seven. Some sharks have to swim in order to breathe, like the white sharks, the mako sharks. Other sharks do have the ability to sit on the bottom and pump their gills and let water through, and that'd be like nurse sharks and lemon sharks. Okay, so now our sharks can see, our sharks can breathe. And now we'll talk about those specialized senses, and we're gonna talk about their ears. And sharks don't really have ears like humans. In fact, the, sh the ears on sharks are very hard to see. And so you're just gonna take your pencil and just make two little, two little dots really on top of their head. And that is their ears. And it will go into their inner ears. And sharks are very good at hearing low frequency sounds in the ocean. Sounds travel very well underwater. And so probably they can hear some things from, you know, a couple football fields away. Okay, so now we're going to fold our shark back up. So we have our eyes, we have our ears, we have our gills. Let's talk more about some of their senses. So the one that probably sharks are most known about is their sense of smell. So use our marker and put in our nostril. And sharks, some sharks, if we would put a couple drops of blood in a Olympic sized swimming pool, sharks would be able to detect that. Two thirds of their brain is devoted to the sense of smell. So that's pretty amazing. And so there are two nostrils, you know, one on each side. The nostrils can detect smell separately to help detect the, the origin of the smell. So imagine, you know, when you come home where you go into a restaurant and you smell, oh, fresh baked cookies. You know from your sense of smell that the cookies are somewhere in that building, but until you use all your other senses, you can't find those cookies. So your sense of smell will take you maybe to the room to where those cookies are, but your sense of smell isn't gonna take you directly to that individual yummy cookie. So sense of smell, pretty amazing. Then the next sense that sharks have to use to find their food is something called the lateral line. And again, we're gonna use our pencil, because it's not always easy to see. And fix, fish also have a lateral line. And so we're just gonna make some lines, small little lines or dots, going down the side of the shark. And these are sensitive fluid-filled sacs that are responsive to vibration, changes in water pressure, and movement in the water. So you know like if a fish is injured and it's thrashing, a shark is gonna sense that and again, it's gonna kinda of go a little bit closer. So that is the lateral line. And maybe they can sense that from a few hundred feet away. The next sense, again, then they'll probably go on and see with their eyes, you know, probably not too far away. And then the sense that I think is the most amazing sense is their ampullae of Lorenzini, which is a strange phrase, isn't it? So everybody say, ampullae of Lorenzini. And you're gonna take your marker and you're just gonna make dots all along the nose and down around the mouth. And these are gel-like pores 
that detect electrical pulses in the ocean. And all living things give off electrical pulses. Now, the sample live Lorenzini is not gonna help sharks detect food from hundreds of yards away or anything like that. It's just gonna be probably a few feet or a few meters. But if you're at an aquarium and in a shark tunnel and a shark is above you, you'll be able to see, it looks like just little black pepper specks. So it's pretty easy to see the ampullae of Lorenzini. If you're out fishing and you catch a shark, you'll see the ampullae of Lorenzini. It's really an amazing, amazing sense. So now the sharks, they can hear it, they can smell it, they can sense the vibrations with their lateral line, they can detect electrical impulses with their ampullae of Lorenzini. And then of course, what sharks are well known for is their teeth. So again, you're gonna take your marker. And teeth for sharks are like built-in silverware. Depending on the shark and what they eat, they're gonna use different utensils to get to their food. Some sharks eat fish, some sharks eat sea turtles, some sharks eat seals and whales, some eat whelks and conchs and, and other snails. And so I'm just doing general triangular teeth, but I expect all of you to be drawing very different looking shark teeth, and that is okay, because all of our silly swaying sharks are supposed to look different. And then what I'm gonna do, because I want my shark to look really cute, I want my teeth to pop out, so I'm just gonna color in the mouth black, just again to make my shark pop and look cuter. Because if you're doing a craft, if it's not cute, then what's the purpose of it, right? And I want your shark to be so jawsome that everyone is jealous of it and everybody wants to make a shark craft. So make your most jawsome shark ever. All right, so there's our teeth. And then we just have one last thing to do. This didn't take long at all, did it? You're gonna take your pectoral fin. Remember your pectoral fin helps give the shark lift and a little bit of steering and we're gonna fold it up. We're gonna make the shark a little bit more 3D. Because now we can stand our shark up and it can sway. And that's your silly swaying shark. And the last thing that I forgot to talk about was the camouflage. And so we were talking about we wanted sharks to be light, dark on top, light on the bottom. And you can see ours is kind of darker on top and it also kind of mimics little um, sunlight going through the surface of the water. And so if, a, if an animal's on top of the shark looking down, it's gonna look more like the bottom of the ocean. And then if a shark or another animal is underneath the shark, you're gonna see that it's lighter, so it could resemble the top of the ocean, the sky, whatever. And this is called counter shading. And all sharks, seals, sea turtles, fish, they all have some type of counter shading. So you can see our nice counter shading on our shark. So that's our nice swaying shark. And then we'll just kind of compare it with a, a white shark model to show you all the fins on what they should look like. This is, you know, we, we've got to try to be as accurate as possible, but on this white shark model, and believe it or not, we do have white sharks off the coast of the Carolinas. They're not within usually a couple hundred yards of the beach or even a mile. They're probably a couple miles out, if not more. And usually in the late fall into early spring. And a lot of these white sharks have been um, tagged by O-Search. But probably right now, the majority of white sharks are, are further north. They're up Massachusetts, Nova Scotia, up in Canadian waters, New Jersey, New, New York waters. But let's compare and contrast the sharks. So we have our dorsal fin that helps keep them from rolling and our second dorsal fin, and you can see on this white shark, the second dorsal fin is not large at all. Then the caudal fin, which gives propulsion, and white sharks are fairly fast. We have our pectoral fins, and then the two fins that we did not have a chance to talk about or put on our silly swaying shark would be the pelvic fins and the anal fins. So those are the fins on sharks, okay? Now the other thing that we talked about, remember I said, the teeth of sharks are like built-in silverware? Well, I wanna talk about some shark teeth. And so we're gonna go over to these nurse shark. And nurse sharks can be found in South Carolina. If you go to aquariums, nurse sharks are pretty commonly found in aquariums. And nurse sharks, again, all teeth are very different on sharks. Nurse sharks have pretty small teeth because they're going to prey on snails and clams, and so they're gonna crush hard-bodied animals. 
But what's really amazing with sharks is you can see that they have multiple layers of teeth. And so if a nurse shark would lose a tooth, a new one would just come in like on a conveyor belt. And there might be anywhere from three to five rows of teeth and many sharks. And again, all the teeth are going to look different. So a good sized shark, like a lemon shark, could go through 20,000 teeth in its lifetime. So, you know, sharks are pretty lucky. They never have to go to the dentist. They're so lucky. Then there's another shark that also can be found in, in South Carolina. And it's the tiger shark. And look how distinctive these teeth are. And again, tiger sharks are going to prey on bigger animals. So sea turtles, these, these are almost like easily used to slice through the shells of sea turtles, but also they'll eat marine mammals, fish, you know, tiger sharks aren't real picky and they can get pretty large as you can see from this jaw. So that's a tiger shark. If you would find a tooth, a tiger shark, on, tiger shark tooth on the beach, you'll be okay and be able to, you know, be able to identify it. And then the last shark jaw I want to talk about is the black tip shark. Black tip sharks are very easily seen from the Myrtle Beach State Park fishing pier from late spring through early fall. And you can see they have just really more of the typical shark tooth, kind of skinny. These are gonna specialize in fish. And you can see all the teeth are not the same size. Uh, and so depending on the bottom jaw, lower jaw, it all depends. So black tips very commonly seen from the park. So hopefully you learned a little bit about the fantastic adaptations that sharks have to find their food. The next thing we want to do is show you some videos that we've filmed from the pier of these black tip sharks. And we were really lucky to get this footage. The water conditions were perfect. Uh, the schools of fish were huge. And so we hope that you really enjoy these jawsome videos we're going to show you now taken from the Myrtle Beach State Park Pier. Well, we hope you enjoyed those videos and we hope you get the opportunity to go out to a beach and get to a local fishing pier all along the coast of South Carolina. And if you're really lucky, maybe you'll see some fantastic sharks out there.